Hello everybody. Welcome back to the shop. For Ten more minutes. Time to cheap building action. That's a drama baby. <laughs> you guys missed them videos didn't you? Well I ended up being a couple of long little mini series. <laughs> Uh, I'm fixing to get back on the Thunder Chief people today. Vacation's over. Time to quit loafing. Get that thing in the air. This is the last little leg on this journey. I'm going to bust it out. We're going to have the Thunder Chief climb. First of all, OJ5. Look at this. Got my bench all cleaned off. I had to clean it off better, but then I had to go digging through. <laughs> I just stopped and messed it up again. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna search. Well, Bud J5 built one of these little top flight Corsairs. He did a real good job, man. He, uh, you know, learned how, from my watching my videos, learned how to make his gear doors on this little thing. He made them and they came out sweet. I, I seen it and I was, I was impressed. But now he's having trouble with his uh, uh, tail gear door. You know, on them Corsairs, man, they had a long old gear door, kind of like this. This is my nose gear on my Thunder Chief. Okay? Now, notice, this ain't straight. Okay? Uh, we're going to get into hinging stuff like this, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And uh, you got to use the offset gear door hinge hinges, but they got to be a different size. you got to use a small one down here and a big one up here. You know, to get the trajectory right and uh, for them to work but uh, for basic gear door hinge like this right here this is how they come okay they got a bunch of holes in them and they are for your air cylinders but you know uh, you d if you know which one you're going to use you go ahead and cut them off now the the ones you don't need and most of the time we use this one right here but uh, some cases you got to use these but I usually use these and so go ahead and trim them off right now so you know make it nice and neat now how to position these things it's really important on how do you position them you can't just glue them bad boys on there and they'll work so if you glue it right there it ain't even going to clear the lip you know and then you get into they ain't going to open far enough stuff like that if you come out too far this way uh, they won't open because it actually gets closer to this as it gets farther. You see that? And then you don't have a very, very big gap right there. So, rule of thumb is, you know, you take this and you bend it in the ale, just like it is when it's open. And you take it all the way to this edge. Okay, can you guys see that? Take it all the way to this edge where it's open on the 45 and then it will open and it will clear all that stuff that's pretty much rule of thumb see and then you have about the same distance up here now if you have a flange on there you have to trim that flange back you gotta take your little cutting tool you gotta take your little cutting tool and uh, cut in you know if you got if you have a flange and go all the way to your deal but this is why I had to find this pencil the other day check it out still going still got pencil left still going <laughs> by the logo dude <laughs> I could sharpen that for a long old time. Okay, now, <clears throat> there's another type of hinge. If you have a, you know, a curved surface or something like that, when that door opens, them hinges tend to want to bow and stuff like that. There's another type of hinge. It's, it's an offset hinge, but it uses ball links. Okay, this is actually a top flight hinge, but you can make these people. You can, you know, figure out how you need it, trim it, or I mean, cut it out of aluminum. You can even make you up a little jig and lay them up out of carbon if you wanted, okay? But in that hole there, 
you got to put one of these ball link ends. Most time you got to trim them off. You got to cut that about in half. Okay, put a screw in the back side. Put that in there. Okay, and the other end is just a simple elbow with a ball link. Okay, it's just a little piece of a uh, little L shaped deal. And you put that in there. Okay, this will allow this when it opens. If it's got a bend, you know, if it when it's open and it's like that, it'll, it'll still move freely. It won't put nothing in a bind. And uh, that's my, what I'm have to do, do here. See, on this one, I actually have to use a longer arm than this this one here. Okay, for that to open right, and that's going to have end up have being a big old gap on the fuselage. So that's how the real one works. Now. This is another type of hinge. These you can make these real easy. Okay, you can just use that. Uh, I believe it's called J10. You know, I think Bob Violet sells it. It's like that real hard fiberglass stuff. It's already laid up. You see, this is actually four pieces. Okay, you see that? And then there's a hole drilled and uh, nut and bolt put through there. Okay. Well, this will do the same thing. You just use a, you know, big gob of epoxy right here. This is actually a Jet Legend hinge, and I got the same ones in my F, in the, the F16. You just kind of put a ball of your cotton flock and epoxy right there, you know, and dab it in there to where you get, it ends up with a bigger footprint. But they hold pretty good, and you can cut these into your if you put some balsa wood doublers in there or something you know any kind of uh, gear door thing and inner gear door liner you should say and get to you know make your own hinges that way that's probably what I'm going to have to do with this I use carbon I've made these type of hinges before and uh, you know I can, I can cut them out of carbon anything make nice ones but I'm going to have to have this one's going to have to have a longer shaft than this one, than this end. And I might be able to get a cheat and get away with using two different kinds like that, but that might look a little tacky. And I might just make one like this, but longer arms so they match. And I could just uh, cut grooves into my foam, epoxy them in there, and they'll hold really good. Really, really good because this gets cut in half right here. This is my, you know, front gear door. But I wanted to go over some gear door hinges like that, and pretty much all of them are the same. If you take them, tack glue them like that at first. And also, if, if this is your fuselage and that's thicker than your gear door, you might have to shim this edge here that goes on your door. You know what I mean? And to bring it out to the outside edge of your wood so that sits flat otherwise that's going to be at an angle and you'll get a bad glue joint but that's the deal with the hinges now move on to bigger and better stuff I gotta get back on that thunder tube today and uh, I'm gonna get a plan I might get that other wing all finished up uh, I got a pretty good plan on the ductworks, but I'm going to have to lay up a new one for that other side. But I think I'm going to go with it. I think it's going to work out good. But it says, well, shoot, this was the prototype. Just go ahead and leave that cut in this one. But the thing is, if it flies good, this jet's going to be around a long time. So I want to go ahead and uh, do it like I'm going to do it now. So that's the plan because. Uh, this thud ain't going nowhere. It's coming back to the shop after that maiden. All pretty. And uh, that's about all I got for right now. But I'll, I'll make y'all some more Bob TV today. It's time to quit loafing and get back to work. Dang sissy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we'll see you back in the shop. Same Bob time. Same Bob Station. This episode of Bob TV was broadcasted in Philly.